You can invoke the new Windows Start menu by clicking on the Windows icon in the lower left hand corner of the screen, much like the Start button in Windows 7. So today we're going to talk about the five different sections, how they work, how you can add, change, or delete tiles from the Start area, and the other functions as well. Finally, I'll cover how to change its colors and transparency. So here's your entire Start menu area. The main section consists of tiles that serve the same purpose as they did in Windows 8. For Windows 7 users, they replace the permanent links you had set up in the left-hand column. Now the next section is the most used list. As you use programs, they will appear here sorted by the most used in descending order. And depending upon how many slots you have, they will appear there. Uh, the next section is the recently installed. As you install programs, they'll appear here. And that way you can find a program you just install quickly and add it to your tiles area. Uh, the next section is what I call the system area consisting of the power button and app section. Now I'll talk about how to configure that later. And then finally down to the last we have the all apps which is uh, replaces the entire app screen on your old Windows 8. And again, I'll cover that later as well. Now unlike older start menus, you can actually resize this to take up as much screen space as you want. You grab the top of it and drag up or down. This is going a little slow because of my screen capture program running. Uh, you can do the same thing over here and drag it. It's a little tricky with the scroll bar, but you can grab the corner there until it turns into an arrow, pull it that way. You notice the tiles automatically move around and reposition themselves accordingly. So you have complete control over how much screen you use in this kind of mode. Now to be clear, this side over here is not links that you can edit. This is most used and recently added, and then of course the system stuff. But you have to remember, you cannot add links manually over here. You can't grab a tile over here, for example, in this tile area, grab the calendar, and drag it over here to that side over there. You see the no, cannot do symbol right there. So you can't do that. The main thing to remember that this is your link area now. This is what you used to be able to do on the left on Windows 7. This is your area. You're going to be using tiles whether you like it or not. Now you can go the other way. You can go over here and look on your most used, for example, list over here. You can grab something to move it over to your links to make a permanent tile on your desktop. Uh, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and grab it with your, either your mouse or your fingertip. and You grab it and hold and drag it over to the Start menu, and then you simply put it in the area you want. So uh, this is uh, the calculator I want to put in my utilities. But before I do that, I'm going to move it back just to show you something. If I let go, you'll see it's still on my list. But once you drag it and release it, it removes it from your recently used, and the next one that is not showing up will appear in this list at the bottom. So it keeps a running list of your most used to the least used, but only a certain number. But that's how you add from that, this area over here. Now, a lot of people uh, are going to want to be able to install the most recently added. So we're going to go and get something and install it to do that. So let's go out to the store. And I'm going to go ahead and use Flipboard, for example, which is uh, what they have one here. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. And I'm going to go ahead and install it. And once it does that, it will appear on the recently installed list. I, I'm going to stop here. I'm not going to go through the full install. Uh, but let's take a look. Now, there's a little bit of a bug in this version, the pre-release uh, version, that it doesn't show up in your list uh, when I click on the list. Let's go over here, and you'll see it's not on there recently added. If I log out and log back in, it's there. And I'm sure it'll be fixed by the time release time is. But I'm going to go here to the menu, and it's not there either. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and log off and log back on. So here we are. Uh, it's there, so I can drag it over here, drop it in my link or my tile area, and decide where I want to do uh, to put it in there. So I'm just going to drop it in over here for the time being. So while I'm here, I want to show you how to move stuff around. You just grab and hold it, drag the tile around. For those of you who haven't done that in Windows 8, you just drag it wherever you want, and it goes inside whatever group you drop it in. Now, it's available to you if you right-click. There are certain menu functions that are available if you right-click on an icon. Here we right-click on uh, flipboard and you'll see that we can do different things. Because it's already there, there's the unpin. If it wasn't, it would say pin. For example, that's how it is there when it's not already on the start menu. Uh, so we go back over here and we can right click and say pin the taskbar. So I pin the taskbar and it shows up down there at the bottom. I can right click there. I can unpin it from there or I can unpin it from above as well. Okay. 
Uh, so that's a quick view of how you can unpin and pin things to the taskbar start menu. Now Windows 8 users are already familiar with the right click on installing and resizing, but let's do that. Let's go ahead, I'm not going to uninstall it, but let's resize it. There's the smaller size, the smallest size. I can go up here and go to medium, which is the normal size when it installs per initially. I can go to wide, which is two across, and I can go four, two high, two across, and go to high, and get even more information on the screen. Uh, I haven't configured uh, face or uh, flipboard yet, so it's not showing anything on top. Let's go over here and look at the sports. If I right-click over here and I say turn it off, it goes back to its natural icon. I right-click again, and it starts showing information right there on the screen. So now that I have it there, let's go back in, and I'm going to change it back to the default size uh, first, make it more manageable. And like I said earlier, if you just drag it, click and hold, drag it or finger for that matter, uh, and move it back around, you can move it to any group you want. Now here's the title of the group. If I click here you know, on top of the words news or any group name, it just starts, opens up an editing box. You just start typing. You can change it to whatever you want to say uh, there to name your group. Uh, I'm just going to put it back as news for right now. Uh, the same goes uh, if you click on the little icon, the little bar icon right there, uh, you can do that or click in the area. Uh, you can rename that way. So let's talk about new groups. Let's drag this guy down here and you'll notice a blue blank bar appears above it. And so all you have to do is drop it when that shows up. Then you can create that group. I'm going to call this group uh, readers because it's news readers I'm going to put in here. And that's how you rename your groups. Now let's say I don't want it down there. I want that group somewhere else. I click on the name and hold it. And now I can drag the entire group, no matter how many icons are in it, and put it where I want it to be on my menu. So that's why you have complete control of your icons within a group and where everything uh, is on your menu. So you can customize your start menu to your preferences and be most efficient for you to use. Now, one of the great features of Windows 7 was your jump list, and you could click on it, right click on an icon and see the most recently edited ones. Uh, edited items that you were working on. Uh, for example, we're going to show you Notepad here. If I right-click on Notepad here, you'll see that all I get is the uh, tasks associated with it ranging it on the Start menu. If I have it down here on the taskbar, you'll see that a list of the most recent documents that I've used. So it does have that feature, but just not up here in the Start menu area. Now, it does have it on the Recently Added. If I go over here to uh, File Explorer, for example, down below you'll see the most recently added uh, edited things there or locations I've gone to. So jump lists are there just in a limited fashion right now. Maybe in the final version they'll be there completely. Now in Windows 8 there was a whole page dedicated to your old all your apps that were installed. Well in Windows 10 there's a new addition to the menu that allows you to select take a look at the ones uh, you have. And that's where you go down to the bottom and it says All Apps. And it's highlighted with new because there's new programs you haven't seen yet. So if you click on it, it uses the same interface with Windows Phone. You'll see it's an alphabetical listing. You scroll down and you can see all of them there. But you can also click on the letter to jump and only the ones that have programs starting with that uh, letter will be highlighted to jump to. So you just scroll. So you click here, select the area you want, you click on it and say boom. And there you jump right to the programs that are available to you. Now there's a little hidden feature of this is that if you click on this and you go to a program that, or a section that has more programs installed underneath it, for example, here's Fraps. If I hit that little down arrow uh, next to it, you'll see that it has the actual program that's underneath that title. But let's go to one that's a little more involved. Let's go here to uh, NVIDIA. Let's click there and there you'll see the programs that were installed underneath NVIDIA Corporation. Uh, let me go find another one down here. Uh, there's my software I used to create the videos. There's all the software associated with that so you can directly access that piece of software uh, for either pinning it to your start menu to run it from there, whatever you want to do. One of those simple and effective updates uh, between Windows 10 and Windows 8 is the location of the power options. On Windows 8 you had to go to the other screen and even though they added it up there on the top right, it's right here on the bottom left next to your start button. There are your options to uh, go ahead and uh, up restart or update your system or, or whatever you need to do. Very handy. 
Now that we've gone over all the features of uh, Starving, I want to show you how to configure it, uh, the backgrounds and all those kind of things. So let's go over here to settings and click on that. You'll see the new control panel come up. And if you look over here, there's different ways to do things, network security. But what we're interested in is going to be the personalization area. And you've noticed down here, there's a start like, uh, list right there to click on. Now, the first item, the occasionally show app and content suggestion, I personally haven't seen any of that yet. Uh, but let's go down to the store and display recently open programs. If you look over here, that's this list right here, the recently open stuff. So you can turn that on so it appears or doesn't appear. If we click on it over here, they go away. Now below that was the recently uh, added ones that you installed. And if I turn it off, it no longer, that section is missing from uh, there. And we turn it back on again. And we click down here. You'll see the recently added section. Now, the next section is pretty complex. If we click on this Customize here, you can turn on and off things. Like I can show the File Explorer, the settings, all in this area down here. You notice I have those two turned on down here. So if I t turn them off here like that and like that and go back, and you'll see all we have left is the Power and the All Apps area over here. So uh, let's go and turn those back on, and we'll go down and take a look again. And they're back. They've returned back there. Now, if I go back in here and turn on some of these other items, uh, download documents, videos, and all that, and I come back down here, there's that long list of things there. With They all just have smiley faces right now, but that, they're all listed there. So if I uh, go back over here and I turn all that stuff off, and you can have a couple other things here. There's the home group network and all that. You can turn those on and off. So if I turn on network, for example, and now that's listed there. Uh, network is under that list. So you can jump to your network. Uh, personal folder, on, off. Now we have the File Explorer there. It jumps right to my personal folders. So if we go uh, now it's back, hit the back button, and we go to the main configuration screen, you see some start behaviors. One is the full screen start menu on a desktop. And the other one is to show the recently displayed on the start menu and the taskbar. Uh, not really much difference there, but this is the partial screen start start menu. So what we're going to take a look at now, though, is how to change that to the Windows 8 version, which is a full screen. If we click on it now, you'll notice that it's now the start menu uh, is going to encompass the entire screen. So if you like the idea of a full screen start menu, uh, that's the way you do it. Now you can bring back your, your list by just clicking on the menu icon up here and you'll see that it toggles this out. And then of course you can toggle it away later on. But it allows you to have both a full screen menu and your list at the same time. So if you're on a laptop, you may want to use this particular uh, feature to stay on the full screen uh, this way. Or you can have it to where you have a partial by going back and changing this back to a partial. And you're back to the standard, the new start menu that only occupies uh, a portion of your screen, as it does here. So now that you've got it working the way you want, you may want the appearance of difference because you're not a black background kind of guy. So you go over to settings, and we go back here to personalization. Okay, but we click up here on colors, and you'll see that you can select different colors uh, for your start menu. Now, I've always been sort of a teal blue or steel blue kind of guy, so I'm going to take the darker blue there. And you, you notice it doesn't show up yet. You have to scroll down here and click on the box that says Show Color on Start Taskbar and Action Center. Now, when I click on it, you see the taskbar changed. But, believe it or not, it didn't change here. Uh, what I had to do was close this completely then come back down here, and now the color change, as you can see, has been applied to your start menu. Uh, so that's the way that is configured. So if then there's a couple more settings. There's, uh, if you go back here to personalization, and we go here to colors again, you'll notice at the bottom there's the settings that say make it transparent. So if I click on this, and I say on, okay, and I turned off colors, I'm, so it's going to show up in black transparency. If I click down here now, you'll see that it's transparent behind the uh, uh, tiles. So there's my ultimate guide to the Windows 10 Start menu. I hope it helps the Windows 7 users transition easily over to Windows 10. It should even help Windows 8 users adapt to the new ways of working with your Start menu. So when you get that new upgrade or that new system, you should be able to play around with it, configure it, change the colors just the way you like so that you're much more effective using your new Windows 10 Start menu.
Hey, and don't forget to subscribe to Old Guy Geek. Come on back for Windows 8 and Windows 10, and Windows Phone 8 and Windows 10, and general how-to videos, all here to help you make the most out of your system.